Hello there, welcome to Hashtag Toe to Toe, your boxing uh, questions, your teasers discussed, ruminated upon by the gentleman alongside me. Joining Spencer Fear on it is uh, Ed Robinson, who was holding court on uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning, as James Gale retained his super middleweight title. But all and about did an Tyson. excellent job as well. You did a very good job. James Gale in the end did a very good job. But Ed, welcome. What a weekend. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? British boxing on a real high. 11 world champions for Great Britain, 12 if you include Ireland as well with... And Andy Lee. Lee, who's fighting Billy Joe Saunders, so really exciting times. Godfather asks, uh, Spencer, where does this win rank? And he's talking about Tyson Fury among Brits' wins in history. He says, best win since Hatton Zoo, which was, what, 10, 10 years ago? It was 10 years ago. Um, I don't know, because there's some really good ones. Uh, I know, like, my learned friend here, Ed Robertson, would, <laughs> would say um, Napoles versus um, John H. Tracy, which was in Mexico City in 1975 but for me Lloyd Hunnigan beating um, Donald Curry in 1986 September 1986 that's the biggest that rakes up to for one of the you biggest you stole your thunder a bit there Ed no I haven't, no, I, haven't. <laughs> yeah. I, I passed it to say that this is Ed but I would say not, nothing tops Sugar Ray Robertson when Sugar Ray Robertson lost um, um, to Randolph Turpin in 1951 nothing ever was going yeah. to top that but yeah I, I would say it, it ranks very very high because nobody didn't really expect Tyson Fury to win especially out in Germany I'm British wins, in, yeah. British wins in history, heavyweight wins in history, British wins. Well, I completely no, no, agree, I yeah. mean, agree with Spencer completely. As those are the biggest wins. Turpin against Robinson for me. And I think Don Curry was considered a pound for pound future mm -hmm. great when Lloyd Hunnigan beat him. But for me, the Stracy Napolis is interesting because it was Stracy going over to Mexico and no one gave him a shot over there. Yeah. And Napolis was never quite the same again. McGuigan against. Pedroza, I'd say as well, but, fight, because, fight, because, fight, because it was it was someone who's considered still at the top of their game. Yeah, but afterwards maybe. In yeah, but, but that was in that. London, I suppose. That was in London, yeah. but uh, Hatton Zoo as well, because you know at the time I think most people thought that uh, Kostya Zoo would knock out Ricky Hatton, but in hindsight, maybe maybe it's because Hatton threw him into retirement and beat him up so bad. But the reality is he didn't box again, and I'm not sure whether Vladimir Klitschko box again. Best win, surprise win for a British heavyweight? Do you think? Danny Williams versus Mike Tyson. Yeah, even at that, even that stage of Tyson's career. Yeah, I don't care. Danny was something like, what was he, a 36 to 1 underdog? Yeah. yeah. If, if, if you'd include Ireland, I'd say Kevin McBride beating Mike Tyson. I just <laughs> still can't believe that that, <laughs> that happened. It's funny that you say that. On the, on the night when that fight happened, like, we was at Danny, Danny Williams' house for that fight. And Danny, when, when Danny says, I've got a feeling that Kevin McBride's going to beat him, yeah. because he was saying, you could see in Tyson's face that like, he just didn't want to be there anymore. No. So I, I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to include that one. Tyson was prop. Tyson weren't shot that shot when he when he lost. Him, <laughs> not shot when Danny. he fought your friend. No, when he was no, there, no, yeah. no. I'm telling you why. Because prior to that fight, Tyson knocked out Clifford Etienne in hellacious fashion. Yeah. So and nobody gave Danny a prayer. Then he got yeah. beat by Danny Williams. You say was his desire really there? I don't know, but Tyson's an all-time great. And Julius Francis can attest that the uh, millennial Tyson wasn't that bad, was he? We had Julius Thank on the other week as well. Uh, Lee, Lee Woodward says, uh, uh, after a career best foot performance, can Fury keep raising the bar? Because it's a good point by Lee, because he did something almost unpredicted, particularly even from the weigh-in, we suddenly started to raise our eyebrows and perhaps the, the game plan, the focus of, of Fury was elevated. I thought he still looked a bit like an unpolished diamond and I think there's room for improvement with him, yeah. even though it was a tremendous win. He, you know, he answered a lot of questions. He, he showed me that when he's been down in the past, that was a concentration problem more than a durability mm -hmm. problem because he was so focused on... by shorter guys as well. He's always been looking at all the yeah, lockdowns. But... That FIFA when he knocks him over, uh, Kevin, um, Cunningham when he knocks him over, yeah. right overhand rights from shorter men. That sometimes he's confident because he's so confident. Sometimes yeah. he neglects certain things. I, I believe like uh, he, he just forgets it, and as he forgets it for the shorter guys, they can throw overhand rights when he gets caught with them. And Peter Fury in the corner definitely adds some discipline to him. How, how, how good was his jab? Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. He was like Larry Holmes, round ten. Yeah. He was, I swear, he was like a lot of guys when they throw their jab out like. Um, Ed, Ed would do this all the time like Ed like we muck around with Ed and Ed does that he jabs from the shoulder yeah. loads of guys like in the, they, they snatch their shots like Andy Joshua will throw a jab and he'll snatch it back you watch how Tyson Fury is frying a jab he's frying from the, from the shoulder from the shoulder part a la Larry Holmes it's hard to read his shots because he's very Thank loose very with much. loose yeah. the shoulders now I'm interested to pick up on what Lee said there about the can he raise the bar? Because he raised the bar physically in terms of conditioning, didn't he, Tyson Fury, for this one? Had lowest uh, weights in, in recent memory and just this physical specimen that he seemed to be in, the fitness. He had a lot of notice, especially with the postponement of the fight. 
And although he didn't throw that many punches in the fight, he was perpetual motion. And I was worried after the first two rounds because he was, he was continually moving, fainting, confusing Vlad and mm. using his feet all the time. I was worried that, you know, as the rounds went on, that with all the adrenaline and everything, he'd tire. But he showed a great engine. He's never going to be built like Anthony Joshua, but his no. fitness isn't really a problem. Yeah, because yeah. he's talked about gaining five or six stone between fights. It's important he, he doesn't do that, is he, it? He now? does, but when we're, we're speaking about um, conditioning, I think the conditioning is more to do with his, his mental psyche and his belief. It was so beautiful to see prior to the, him going out to fight that you, you've got, you know I mean, he, Tyson Fury's an advocate of Christianity, but he, his agent, Asif Vali, is a Muslim, mm -hmm. and they all encompass together to pray, and one said they one prayer, one said they other, and he went out there and he had that belief, and I think it's that belief, when you believe in your belief so much, it becomes your reality, and that's what's happened. Tyson Fury spoken so much trash over <laughs> the years, right? Yeah. And we can take it now because you backed it up. And he did that, and he's was, he was brilliant for British boxing. He's brilliant for boxing globally. Collective faith in the camp. Pete Higgins asks, uh, and this on the, the, the sort of uh, the spin-off from the fight, the resulting. And he, I think Tyson Fury said that he wants a bit of time to work out what he's going to do next, anyway. But Peter says, uh, "Are you surprised that Tyson Fury, a proud fighting man, dismissed talk of facing the Bronze Bomber and Mr. David Hay, Bronze Bomber Deontay Wilder? What do you make of?" Uh, that Ed, because he hasn't quite dismissed. Well, yeah, you can't say a proud fighting yet. man dismissed talk because that makes it sound as if he wasn't happy to fight David Hay. He was twice. David Hay yeah. pulled out the fight twice. He's had his chance. He's got to earn it again. That's just simple fact. The bronze bomber has not really boxed anyone too dangerous yet. He's got his own agendas. He's got to fight Povetkin. He might have a voluntary first of all um, and squeeze that in. I think the problem for uh, Tyson Fury is going to be the politics of boxing. So mm -hmm. Vladimir managed to keep those belts together. Yeah. Everything apart from. Um, you know, the splinter of the WBA and what's happened with... And those bodies don't want the belts to be kept together. Well, no, it, well the IBF have already ordered purse bids in a few days' time for Zar Glaskov, who's with main events. Mm. I think he might be aligned to Al Heyman. Yeah. And that's a fight that's, I think, difficult to sell. I mean, it's just not as, as big a fight as, as Tyson would want for his first defence. Plus, he's got a rematch clause with Vladimir Klitschko. So it's all murky and difficult to work out exactly what's going to happen. Surprised that Wilder them. would face Fury after that performance? Want um, to face Fury? Yeah, because while Wilder, uh, Wilder was saying, right, after the weekend, I'm the best heavyweight in the world now. And I'm saying, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, seriously, I want, did, you, did you watch his last fight? <laughs> yeah, his that last guy was two about three seven, fights, seven, really. 70, 72 years old, that guy was. No, I think right now, for Tyson Fury, is this. Right now, Tyson Fury is the winter flood of boxing. Yeah. Meaning that this, it's a cold time, but what to us and our mindsets of this in eubonics, when it's winter, it's really cool. And when we've got a flood, we're inundated. So we're inundated now with somebody like a Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is the winter flood of boxing. Seriously, I've got a lot of time for him, man. I, I just love the guy right now. You mentioned Anthony Joshua's physique. Got a big uh, fight coming up against uh, Dylan or Dillian White. JM asks, so best potential British fight out of Fury versus Joshua, Crawler versus Flanagan or Brooke versus uh, Khan. What do you think, Ed? Well, I think potential is the word there. So if you're talking potential fight, Fury, Joshua could be absolutely enormous yeah. down the line. But it's, it's, Joshua's, Joshua's, I mean, like, let's not get past, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. He's got to fight Dillian White, first of all, on December yeah. the 12th. Uh, Dillian's there to win, and it's an interesting fight for the British title and the Commonwealth title. Joshua's still a, a fair way behind Fury for me, as far as experience goes. Mm -hmm. Maybe not so much in ability. Brooke Khan is, is the biggest fight in Britain. That's the fight that has to happen next summer. You know, it's just because it's so intriguing. There's such different personalities. And Crawler Flan Flanagan, the most likely out of that list? I think that's a really good trade fight. I think that's not too likely, to be honest, no, because of the, the opposing camps. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, Flanagan's got his own fight with Derry Matthews. That's a uh, That's an excellent it's fight. It's a good fight, it's you know, and I, I really like Derry Matthews and he's been around a long time and he deserves a big fight like that and he can certainly whack Derry. With Crawler, we'll see what happens with Kevin Mitchell and mm -hmm. whether he can win that interim version of the title. It's and the then Barboza, right? Barboza, Barboza he's, yeah. he's a very he's a big good puncher. Fighter, man. He's, he's the one that Derry basically chose not to fight for, yeah. you know, maybe it's just because risk and reward, but he's gone his own way with Flanagan. So that's a that's a really tough fight, I think, for December Kevin Mitchell. 12th. If Kevin Mitchell wins that, then I think Kevin Mitchell against Crawler is, is the fight I'd like to see. Be very good, wouldn't it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'd, I'd want to see, 100%, um, I want to see Andy Joshua versus uh, Tyson Fury, just for the magnanimous of that fight. That fight would be so 
immense. We've been oversights. You mentioned at the top that you were working on James DeGale against Lucien Bute. We haven't really talked about it yet, which is what the subject Flays is talking about. He says, why doesn't uh, James DeGale get national publicity? He went to Bute's backyard, toughed out a good win. I just wonder if it's because of the nature of a Brit winning a heavyweight title and also the fact that James DeGale perhaps has had the highlights and the headlines before, both in 2008 and in his previous fight. Yeah, it was always going to be overshadowed the same night as yeah. Tyson Fury because the press can only be in one place and the time of the fight as well. I don't think the first bell was till. Really late. It was still after, late local time as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very late. You're still and tired now, aren't you? I'm still tired <laughs> now, definitely. Yes, yes. But, it, but what I would say is nationally, he didn't generate an awful lot of press with it, but internationally, he did. To win a fight like that, an exciting fight yeah. in North America and uh, impress an audience out there, I think was great. He's not scared of boxing anybody at all. He's happy to go on the road. And Badu Jack's a great fight for next April. It's an excellent fight. fight, especially after on a weekend, on a weekend performance. Seriously, I, I was watching James the Girl and I was, I was a little bit perturbed mm -hmm. because James the Girl is an excellent boxer and all of a sudden now he was fighting like he's, he's a puncher. He's more crowd pleasing than he needs to be. Yeah, he's, trying to, he's, he's over trying to do it. I'm saying, you know what? Not saying that you should go and stick He's winding out. up too much, yeah. Yeah, he, no, he was like sitting down and trying hard, like, he's trying hard shots and he'd pause after he throws combinations in the southpaw position. He'd go, he'll go like down to the body and he'd finish with a right hook upstairs and he'd pause to think, right, I must have a reaction and you should go. So would you fear for him against Badu Jack? Yeah. Well, a lot, no, a lot of people told him beforehand that he'd walk through Lucien Boutet because yeah. Boutet got exposed by Carl Froch in five rounds in Nottingham, but Boutet was a good fighter. Yeah, he wasn't finished as everyone said. I mean, right, and I'm, I'm also like in 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 his corner. He had a wealth of experience. Uh, in Butte's corner, he had um, how um, how Howard Grant mm. and Otis Grant. A lot of people don't remember. Like, and I'm surprised that it wasn't mentioned. Fought Ryan Rhodes, didn't he? Beat he fought Ryan, Ryan Rhodes. Rhodes. He yeah. beat Ryan Rhodes for the WBO yeah. and world title. And fought Roy Jones. So you got a, a former world champion in your opposing corner. You got who, these guys know boxing. Yeah. So. Yeah. And Butte did administer a really good game plan. If Butte didn't throw away those first three rounds, then I could have said the fight would have been, maybe it could have gone his way because of how he fought and he was on his own backyard. He was, yeah. in, his, he was, in, he was on his home turf. Mm -hmm. But no, fair play to, to James Aguil. But I'd like to see James Aguil box. I think James Aguil could box anybody's head off. He's a bit too talented for his own good because now he's trying to knock out people. Yeah, and Butte's reignited his career as well, which is good for uh, the 35-year-old Romanian come Canadian. Mark Farrell, final question. Apparently, Ed, because I don't watch it, on uh, Celebrity, <laughs> yes, get me did. out of here. Don't lie. Well, you, well, you told me about it. Uh, apparently, uh, Chris Eubank Sr., or English as he's now known, uh, is uh, accepting terms or accepting the pros prospect of fighting Nigel well, Benner on his exactly. conditions. I did, I did watch it. I did watch it. But, uh, but Mark Farrell says, do we need another fight between these two? Anton Deck kind of put um, Eubank on the spot. I can't believe I'm having this <laughs> Put Eubank on the spot a little bit about the So did you watch it last night? I watched it, yeah, of course, with, with the missus at home. And there is, you know, <laughs> there's been back and forth between Ben and Eubank, but we just yeah. don't want to see it. You know, in golf, you can have a senior tour. You can't really have a senior tour in boxing. 50 year old boxers in the ring. The second, the second fight they had was too late. It should have been sooner after the first yeah, fight. Yeah, it was three years after. They fought originally. Their first, their first fight was November 1990. The second fight was, was October. 1993. We don't want to see that fight. I'm, no. Seriously, I'm not saying it for because why would you want to to, to, to kind of ruffle your, your places in history? Take your legacy, right? Yeah. And, and take your yeah, and that's what that's what would happen. I wouldn't want to see that fight at all. Like, if they think it was letting them do it in arm wrestling or something, the senior tours of boxing. Yeah, dude, thank you. I, I, I'm I wouldn't sure want to see that. that fight. Two great legends. Ed, pleasure having you back on Good the to uh, hashtag toast to toast. Spencer, yeah. as always, uh, remember back next week. Uh, get your questions in on Tuesday. We discuss them Wednesday. Check out the audio podcast as well at skysports.com slash boxing. Also available on iTunes. Enjoy Sky Sports Live on all screens, on the go, and the best bits on demand.